No matter what your line of work, the organization of your workspace plays an important role. Odds are that whatever tools you use most often are in easily accessible drawers or even right on your desktop. Working in a digital environment is no different. The more time you spend looking through menus while you work, the more time it takes. Depending on how you're going to use Photoshop, there are several workspaces available by default that put all of the main tools of that trade in easy reach. So let's take a look at the default workspace presets. Uh, they're broken up into five categories. We have design, painting, photography, essentials, and new in CS5. Now, each one of these categories basically opens a different set of panels. What Adobe has attempted to do is to break up the panels uh, in terms of the different aspects of Photoshop. Photoshop is used for graphic design. It's used for digital painting. Obviously, it's used for photography. Essentials is going to give you all the basics. And then the tab over to the right will show you everything that's different in this iteration of Adobe Photoshop. So we're going to start out going to graphic design first. Graphic design is made up of several skill sets. You're combining visual arts, typography, page layout, interface design, printmaking. All of these things go into good graphic design. The whole idea of graphic design is that you want uh, a certain message to come across and be remembered. So typically, most graphic design is accompanied by text and the most widely spread use of graphic design is in advertising. Uh, so as you can see right here in the center, we have our character panel and our paragraph panel. So we have all of our text options. Down below layers, uh, graphic design can get extremely, extremely layer intensive because we're using several visual aspects to enhance our text, followed by the channels panel, which serves two purposes. One, we can go in here and manipulate the entire RGB channel or any of the red, green, and blue channels. Later on, if we switch our image mode to CMYK or if we just start out that way, we can set everything up for print and we can make sure that each one of these channels is optimized to give us the best print result. Next is paths. You're going to be doing a lot of vector work in your graphic design because vector is infinitely scalable. And then if you come up to the top, you have your swatches, your layer styles, and your info panel. Over to the left here, you can open Mini Bridge, and we have History. Uh, before I move on to reset any of these panels to their default, simply come down to Reset Design up here in the double arrow icon in the menu itself. Painting. Digital painters such as concept designers or illustrators, by selecting the painting tab on the menu, it brings up the brush presets so you can quickly and easily switch back and forth between your brushes. Layers, channels, and paths are still here. You have your swatches and your navigator. Uh, additionally, you have tool presets so that you can group any tools that you're going to use regularly into this little panel and select them quickly. Also, we have our brush panel so that when you select a brush, you can come in here and change all of the settings or create new brushes from scratch and then save them. Obviously, a painter uses brushes. And then again, you have your history window and shortcut to mini bridge. Typically, when I'm working with a painting preset, I like to come over here to window and just click on color. Drop color over here by swatches. Because, close styles real quick, because that essentially lets me take a swatch and let's say I pick this green here, come over to color. Now I can adjust the green real easily. All right, moving on to photography. You start out with your histogram window. As you get further into photography, you'll find that you use the histogram window more often, and it's going to make more sense than looking like just a jumble of sp different colored spikes. Uh, this graph right here tells you basically everything you need to know about the color that appears in your image. So, like I said, as we talk more about photography, I'll explain more of this histogram to you, but this is essentially similar to the Navigator uh, for a seasoned photographer, because this, whereas the Navigator tells him where on the image he is, this tells him what color appears in the image. So, histogram, Navigator, again we have the info panel. Uh, then you come down here to adjustments. Here's all of your adjustment presets. Masks. Uh, in this case, um, I drew a mask a little earlier when we were talking about design. And we can adjust the mask. 
The bottom panel remains the same, layers, channels, and paths. Uh, in addition to that, we have the clone source tool. Again, this, is, this helps you remove things like red eye or uh, in our clone source panel tutorial, um, I showed you how to duplicate some areas of your image. Um, mini bridge again, history again. Here's a great one for photographers. This is the actions panel. This is the one that lets you automate all sorts of actions. So if you're doing something over the course of 40 or 50 images, come in here, record your actions, open up your next image, play, and then you can continue working. Or later on at a different time, you can bring up the file menu and go to automate, batch automate, and this will draw from the actions panel. The last one that I have to show you here is essentials. And this is going to be a combination basically of painting and design. You have color, swatches, and styles, like I brought up for you in the painting section. You have adjustments and masks, kind of taken from photography, and then you have your standard layers, channels, and paths. So Essentials gives you a basic layout to start with, which you can then customize by coming up here to the window menu and just clicking on a couple of different panels that you can bring up. Okay, let me just reset that really quick. Uh, the last one that we have is the new in CS5 layout. And the new in CS5 layout doesn't look like much over here. It gives you all of the panels that are exclusive to CS5. Now, brush presets itself isn't new in CS5, but it has some options within the brush presets, such as these new brushes right here, which are called bristle brushes that are new, new to CS5. Access CS Live is new. Um, that brings you to Adobe's website. CS News and Resources, again, more web access. CS Review, web access. Uh, Mini Bridge is basically bridge, but in stuck in a panel inside Photoshop. Uh, the great thing about new in CS5 is if you come over here to the menu section and you click on any of these menus, all of the new options in CS5, such as HDR toning, such as lens correction, workspace um, differences, brush, brush presets, everything that they've added or that there's a, a small aspect that's been changed in CS5 is going to be highlighted blue so you can see it real easily. All right, well, that's it for the workspace presets. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below and send any questions that you might have to request at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.